Hello and welcome to another episode of For Your Distraction. I'm one of your hosts, my name is Adam, and with me as always is Scott, my co-host. How are we doing today, Scott? We're doing. We are here. We're doing it. Yeah, the uh, the past, I think, three or four episodes, Mike's been on. He can't join us tonight. Um, we're actually recording this not on our normal time, it's a day or two later. So uh, he's got work in the morning, I'm assuming. <laughs> We are recording this on Easter Sunday night. Do you, uh, how's your Easter? How, how's, how's that been for you today? It was different because we're still quarantined. If you have been living under a rock and always quarantine yourself, then you would know this. But it was, it was very different than what I'm accustomed to. But it was still, it was still nice. Uh, the Easter Bunny came to my house, brought my kids their Easter basket and hit eggs all through the house and then later on my mother stopped over and you didn't see her she was outside the house we were inside the house she left presents for my kids on the stoop and then she hid easter eggs throughout our yard which was kind of nice and then um we just had dinner just us our immediate family in here tonight and yeah it was it was very uneventful for that reason so do you do when you do easter do you do just candy or do you candy and gifts or uh, what do you do oh uh, we're candy and gifts absolutely uh when i was a kid i always got mostly just candy i always got that one toy that i wanted i got one toy my kids they're a lot more spoiled than i was they they love toys so they got quite a few awesome, awesome toys today. Okay. Uh, Mila, when she first came to live with us, she when Easter came, she was, like, really excited and, like, super pumped up and everything like that for Easter. Our family doesn't really, like, do Easter because it's a fairly religious holiday, even though, like, it's been commercialized. We don't really, like, do Easter. Like, we'll buy candy, and that's about it. Like, we'll just get candy on sale or whatever and just have that and munch on that. So when her first Easter here... We were like, um, yeah, we got like candy, but we don't do like gifts. She's like, what? Like, you don't do Easter gifts? Like, no, like that's not really like a thing. I thought, um, but now she gets like an Easter basket and she'll have like both candy and like a few little things that go with it. So yeah, it was, yeah, weird. yeah. It's not like, it's not like Christmas or birthday. You don't go overboard <clears throat> and spend a ton of money, but right. you usually get like you usually get some stuff so okay um well easter i before i'm sorry to, mean to cut you off but i was gonna uh, bring up because i forgot to mention it this is episode five of the quarantine podcast yes it is so, yes it is uh what were you gonna say <sighs> nothing just just i'm over it man i'm i'm ready i'm ready for this quarantine to be over you know i listened to our last episode of the episode before i forgot which one it was and you and Mike and I were talking about we were kind of making our predictions. And and the term we used is when do you think things will be I'm using air quotes here Adam back to normal. And um I remember Mike said he didn't think things were going to get back to normal until January of 2021. That was his prediction. You on the other hand, good sir, you predicted April of 2021. I said you're both crazy. Things are going to go back to normal is the term I used in in August of 2020. That was my prediction. And as I listened to that, I thought, you know, using the term back to normal was a poor choice of words. So I wanted to I wanted to harp on that a little bit here. I honestly don't think things are ever going to go back to normal. Absolutely I think not. no. I think our society has to change drastically from this. I think there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be different after this coronavirus ends. Oh, um, 100%. Like, the idea of just cleanliness. I think the 20-second wash your hands is going to stick with a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of yeah. people that are going to do that every single time. They're going to wash your hands more and more and more. Um, you still have those crazy people that... Yeah, don't really care about that, and they'll just wash their hands normally the way they were doing it before. But I think a lot of people are going to do that. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be maybe a little more health conscious, maybe a little more, oh, you're sick? Oh, God, we got to go to the doctor and take care of this now kind of thing. 
as opposed to like, oh, I'm I got the flu, and I'll just sleep it off, no big deal. You know, I, I think right. there's gonna be a lot more health conscious people after this. I think the craziest thing are the people that are you know kids today, like the like your kids or like Mila. Like it's gonna be really crazy because you grew up like your first I don't know like five, six, seven, eight years in like a normal, just regular kind of life, and then all of a sudden it's like the entire world has gone crazy and been flipped upside down, and now you got all these like stipulations and restrictions about things you can do and what you have to do and everything. So I think it's gonna be very interesting for those people when they grow up. Yeah, I mean you have that. I remember I remember being a kid before September 11th happened, yeah, I re- I remember going with my mother and we would go to like the Pittsburgh airport. I don't know if you've ever been. There's lots of different airports that I'm yeah. sure are like this, but but Pittsburgh airport's near us. It's not very far. It's only like 45, 50 minutes away from my house, and it's a nice airport. We would go there with no intention of traveling. We had we had no ticket, no boarding pass, no passport, nothing. We just walked in and we would eat at a restaurant there we would shop in the stores and and that was that and then september 11th happened and it was like everything changed as far as the airline industry went you can't (coughs) just go to the airport and shop like we used to you you have to go through the security screening you got to take your shoes off it takes hours to get through that security screening now they do all kinds of checks on you and i'm not saying it's a bad thing but after 9-11, it changed that way, and it had to. Yeah, and it's probably going to be the same thing after the COVID. After the COVID has been brought under control, then it's going to be the same thing. Everything's going to change right. again. So I think it's honestly very weird for me just not going to work. Because I don't right. remember the last time I've had this many days off to basically not have to really do much. I mean, I still have class, um, and I'm doing that through the week. But besides that, just not having to, like, go to work is the probably the weirdest thing. Have there been any recent updates with your job? Are you are you still off for the foreseeable future, and are you still being paid at the current moment? Um, it's – right now, we got an email from the president who is responding to somebody else about a question they had, which – is an email that leads me to believe that we're going to be off for the rest of April, essentially. Um, so I, for right now, I do believe that April, we're not even going to be going back to work because there's going to be no point, no students are there, any of that stuff, and they're just going to keep going. Up. Governor Wolf's orders unless he changes them. Um, and for right now, as far as I know, yeah, we're still getting paid because I'm lucky in the sense that my job... Most people that are off who are working like a re, like let's say you work like a retail job, like you sell clothes or electronics or something, where it's like maybe you work at a place where it's not life essential, so it's closed down. You're dealing with the fact that well they're not going to pay you because they're not there working, making money for them. So why would they pay you? The college, while they do have to do reimbursements for uh, room and board for like the last month, month and a half or whatever of school, um, they're still making tuition money so even though we're not there working they're still getting some money in through like tuition they, they've or they've already gotten the money pretty much from like loans and whatever the students paid so it's not like they don't have any money to pay us i think that's the biggest reason why the president's like well just fucking pay him like we've got the money like just pay him whatever so that's that's a positive i think so i don't i don't have to worry about like running out of money and not being able to pay my bills well, that's good. And that, that's that's some other things that are going to have to cha- change from this. I feel like so many jobs – now, now not you. You, like, you can't remotely clean a dorm from your house over the internet. I mean, I, can't, I can build a robot maybe to do it and then I just remote <laughs> control from home. Sure. I can't hand somebody an ice cream cone over the internet. Like some things can't be done remotely. But I feel like there's a ton of jobs out there, a ton, that people would go to an office Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, sit there in a cubicle in front of a computer screen, and now we see, hey, those jobs can be done remotely from your house. I think that's a path that we're going to have to go. I think think you're right. You're right. 
I think it's yeah. I think it's absolutely going to be there's going to be a lot of jaws if you're going to realize hey you know there's no reason for these guys to come in here they did it for these months without having to come in here so why can't they suit home I imagine there's still going to be a lot of bosses like at these companies that are going to want their employees to still come into work even though they can do their job from home just because maybe it's one of those things where they want to see bodies in the building and make sure everybody's actually doing the work and not screwing around I don't know but I imagine it's like a power thing but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of jobs that are going to be like, well, you know what? I guess you just do your job from home. Fuck it. Whatever. Yeah. And it also goes to show you some of these jobs, like working in a grocery store, working at a convenience store, being a clerk at a gas station attendant, you know, some of these jobs that were just looked down on as, as what do they call them, like entry level or or no skill or low skill jobs, like minimum wage jobs. Like now it goes to show you, Hey, these people should be making 10, 11, 12, maybe even $15 an hour. Like these jobs are important. You might look down on them from your ivory tower, but now after this crisis, we see how important these I'm using air quotes again, no skill jobs have become to us like show some damn respect to these people now that is never going to change there's no i don't i wish it would you're right is they there should be more respect shown for these people that are doing these jobs you're not wrong i don't think that's one thing that's ever going to change i think even after things start to as you say quote get back to normal i think after that happens everybody's going to go back to saying Oh, you know what? Oh, you want to make more money? Well, I guess you should have done better in life, or I guess you should have planned better. I guess you should have not, you know, taken a minimum wage job, get a better job. I think that's going to be something that's always going to be. I don't. I don't well, think I hope gonna, you're I wrong. Think... I hope you're wrong. <clears throat> well, because people are still doing that today. People are still like, even as people are talking about like, oh, these great workers, stuff like that, and then the workers are complaining about their conditions. People are saying, well, you know, you should have, you know, planned better in life. You know, you got to do what you got to do because you know you screwed the pooch. There's still people that talk about that like that, so... Yeah, there's always going to be assholes out there. There's there's a movement in Pennsylvania now where the Republicans are trying to put a bill through that opens up all the jobs and goes against what the governor... It's never going to happen because Governor Wolf will veto it. Uh, Go- governor DeWine and uh, my woman crush right now, Dr. Amy Acton over in Ohio, they... A whole Ohio has been on point, man. They've been they've yeah. been great. They've been great with everything. And just just last week, they had a whole bunch of people completely disregarding the social distancing. They showed up and they protested at this at this meeting that they that the governor and the doctor were giving and saying like, restart the economy, open things back up. Like these people are putting their jobs and the economy above saving people's lives yeah so yeah there's always going to be assholes out here that act that way yeah oh yeah absolutely 100 percent um how are things with your job or do you know when you're going back to work uh what's going on on your end well i um i'm not working right now and unlike you i'm not getting paid so i did file for unemployment and i have been waiting playing the playing the waiting game with that i have not received any word but from what i understand everybody's waiting because 17 million people lost their jobs in the past three months yeah so so it's gonna be a while so i used some vacation time i think i was saying that on here before so i do have a little bit of money saved up from that and other than that, I mean, my wife, Kristen, she's still working. She's working from home because she's a school teacher, but she still has to do everything. So she's still getting paid. But I haven't been going anywhere or doing anything to spend any money. So it's been it's it's been a catch-22. It's been a push. It's been a push, basically. It kind of shows you, I guess maybe it shows a lot of people when push comes to shove, how much money they really spend on just things that they may not need or just like hobbies. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Which oh, is, yeah. I mean, it's fine. Your hobbies are your hobbies. You should spend whatever you want on it. But I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people, not you, like a lot of people overspend on certain things. And now they're learning, like, maybe I didn't really need to spend that much money on that thing. Kind of. I think that's another thing that's going to change. Maybe people might start becoming a little more frugal, a little more, how you say, conservative with their money. 
There's one thing that I, I do hope changes, and I'm going to I'm going to change this personally with me, and that's handshaking, Adam. Dude, elbow I bump all the way. Elbow bump. Fuck elbow bump, man. I think I'm going to go. I haven't decided. I've narrowed it down to my top three. I'm either going to do the Spock, Live Long and Prosper. I'm going to do the uh, the Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Or I think the front runner right now is like the house party dance where kid and play, like put their foot <laughs> together and jump around. Like Why basically you... anything but shaking hands. Why don't you do the Demolition Man high five? Remember the high five uh, from Demolition Man? Whenever they were like, oh, you know, they took down Simon or Simon Phoenix or whatever. Or they thought they were going to catch him. And um, what's his name? Rob Schneider. And the one dude did like a high five or whatever. And there was just like an air five and then like a like a circle, like a three three six degree circle like around. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that works, too. I just don't want to shake hands anymore. And I remember like being young in high school and even early on in college when people train you for like job interviews and they tell you you know the handshake is so important you want a firm handshake you want to look the guy in the eye and i'm like now i i I want that to go the way of the dodo i mean it's a social acceptable thing in our culture but i think it needs to die i think we should stop shaking hands oh absolutely like i mean that's gonna i think the people that are gonna be uh really messed up by that are gonna be like businessmen because when you're doing business like come on like the handshake is like the signature part of business. In in America, in America, I really think um, in Asia, don't they bow? Yeah, I think they don't even have contact. Right? Yeah, that's how it should be. That's what I'm talking about right there. I learned how to do screen sharing on Hangouts. Boom. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I want to do that from now on. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's it. It's an interesting time. I think we're gonna have a lot of changes. There's gonna be, like you said, there's gonna be a lot of people doing a lot of things differently from now on. I think it's gonna be fascinating. This is like an anthropologist's dream. <clears throat> Whenever you see like a society change and a culture change, like before your very eyes, so it's gonna be interesting. Um, I think you said you wanted to talk about something, not on the show, but you said you want to talk about something. Something big happened in terms of politics. And we're going to try to not make this a po- huge argument episode like we've done in the past, but something major kind of happened that I think needs to be talked about. Yes, yes. Um, I know before we started, we're going over show notes, and we said, you know, we got to talk about the quarantine. We don't want to talk about it too much. We don't want a full episode on that. Yeah. And then we said, we got to talk about politics. We don't want it to be a full show on that either, but it needs to be said. <laughs> And I am I am very, very emotional, Adam, because something something happened recently and I'm devastated. And that's uh, Senator Bernie Sanders has suspended his campaign for president of the United States. Now, I want to be clear. I want to be clear to you and all the listeners. He has not dropped out of the race. He has suspended his campaign. There is a difference between the two. And I'll explain what suspended means. He is no longer actively campaigning and he is no longer fundraising, but he will still be on the ballot for the remaining primaries and he will still gather delegates for the convention. (laughs) And because of that, our because of the because of the COVID-19 in Pennsylvania, where we live, our primary has been pushed all the way back till June. And I recommend everybody votes by mail, too. That's very important. But when I vote, I am still going to vote for Bernie Sanders and I'm going to vote for all of his delegates, even though he's not going to be the nominee now. It. For all intents and purposes, it looks like it's going to be Joe Biden, who I'm not a fan of, but we'll get into that later. I'm still going to vote for Bernie Sanders' delegates because he has he won some of those early states. He won Iowa and New Hampshire and Nevada, and he won California, which is the biggest state. So he has a lot of delegates. If he continues to garner some delegates 
and he prevents Biden from getting to that threshold where he needs to get to get the nomination, then they go to the conve- a broker convention and Bernie Sanders has to release his delegates to Joe Biden, which Bernie will do if the DNC and Biden reach his demands. And his demands are, you got to be a little more progressive, buddy. You got to work with us on some stuff. I'm not saying you have to pass the Green New Deal and have a single payer health care. But, you know, you need to you need to come a little bit off the right. You need to come a little bit more to the left. And I think that's going to be a good thing. So for those people that may not be as knowledgeable about politics or maybe like foreign listeners who are listening in maybe other countries, uh, potentially explain. So if so, Bernie Sanders has essentially withdrawn and he you can still vote for him in the primaries if you wanted to um but if he were to win let's say he won the primary somehow would he then become the nominee or does he have to do what you said where he has to release his delegates and they have to well it doesn't look like he see the system is fucked like you and I have talked about on this show before. We've talked about the general election and how much we both hate the Electoral College. And I do. I hate the Electoral College, and it needs to go away. But if you think the Electoral College is bad, the nominating process, the delegate process for the primary is even fucking worse. It is horrible. Horrible. And basically, you could win a state. You could win a state and not get all the delegates from the state. And how you get the nomination is when you go to the convention and you have to have X amount of delegates. You have to get, I forget what the number is off the top of my head, but there's a number where you have to get to this many delegates. So it doesn't, like like Bernie right now after Super Tuesday, which Biden did really, really well on Super Tuesday. He, he beat Bernie handily. And he took a very, very large lead in the delegate count. And it doesn't look like Bernie can catch him. I mean, it's not out of the question, but it would be very, very difficult. Okay. Especially with especially with COVID-19, not being able to actively go out and meet people and, you know, campaign, basically. Shake hands and kiss babies. Yeah, so, that's a no-no. so bernie kind of saw that and as much as bernie doesn't agree with biden he (coughs) agrees with trump even less right so he saw that it was time to get behind a nominee and try to beat trump so unfortunately that's that's where we are so so no bernie won't be able to get the nomination now but he can influence the platform of the party now, what if Bernie's concession is okay? That's fine. I stand behind you, but you got to make me your vice president. Would you accept a Biden uh, Sanders president vice presidency? Would you Would you prefer that? At no. least he be in the office. A vice president has very little power. Yeah, Bernie could get but... Bernie could get more done in the Senate than he would as VP. So I wouldn't. I don't want Bernie to be vice president. If he can't be president, then he needs to be senator, where he is. Um, and no, it doesn't work that way because, say, for instance, Bernie was to say something like, "I'll release my delegates to you, and you'll get over that threshold if and only if you make me vice president." And Joe Biden's like, "No, I don't agree to those terms. Like, I'm going to pick somebody else for vice president." Then Bernie says, "No, I'm not going to release my delegates." Well, then if you have a brokered convention, then this is when things get crazy. You bring in the super delegates and you go into a back closed door smoke filled room and they come to an agreement and make a nominee that way. And so it Bernie knows he can't keep Biden from the nomination anyway by doing that. Right. That's why the system is so fucked and I hate it. <laughs> okay. So Bernie Sanders is out and Joe Biden is in. Are you are you even though you're a Bernie bro and you still want to vote, do you would what do you think about Biden going up against Trump? What like what do you think? What are, you, what are your thoughts on right now? I'm not I'm not a Joe Biden fan. I'm not. If if Bernie was the nominee, 
I told you this before on here. I was going to donate money to Bernie. I was going to knock on doors for Bernie. I was going to make phone calls for Bernie. In fact, I did all of that in the primary, but I would continue to do that. Um, for Joe Biden, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to donate time, money, anything. I will show up on election day and vote for Joe Biden reluctantly. Not because I like Joe Biden. It's just that I hate Trump that much. So, okay. and there's, there's a lot of people who aren't like me in that aspect. They're going to do the exact same thing they did in 2016. And they're not going to vote for either of them, or they're just not going to show up or they're going to write in somebody <laughs> or they're going to vote third party. This is why I think I'm with you now. I know you've been saying this for a long time. I think Donald Trump is going to be reelected just because Joe Biden is not a very good candidate. And that's a big problem because people that do protest not voting, where they just where they do what you said, where they don't like either candidate, so they just don't go and vote. Right, it's fine if that's what you want to do. But I believe that if you're one of those people that is says like, "Well, I'm just not going to vote, and I'm just not even going to show up," then at that point, you no longer for the next four years, you don't really have a right to complain about anything going on because you yes, didn't even but cast they will. your vote. I know, but I'm saying like, for somebody like me, like I think if you're not even going to bother voting, don't complain about, you know what's going on in the country or things that you dislike about it because you didn't even bother trying to vote even if it is a shit show like it's like the uh that one episode of south park where they're voting for the mascot of uh the school it's basically between a turd sandwich and a douche and you have to vote yeah. between either one of them so well and that's, that's kind of what we have now like <clears throat> that's kind of what we had we had that in 2016 and we have it in 2020 your options are a turd sandwich and a giant douche. So fuck you. I voted for giant douche and we got turd sandwich and see like it, it, it's, it's a, it's a disaster right now. I hate Trump so much. The only good thing Joe Biden has going for himself is he's running against Donald Trump and Donald Trump is very, very strongly disliked right now. Other than his core base, his rabid, rabid supporters, that would never, ever, ever leave him for anything. Other than them, he's not well-liked by moderate Republicans or independents. So that has what Joe, Joe has going for him. Hopefully Joe can sway enough of them to win. I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I was going to ask um, you, um, because it seems like, like you said, Donald Trump's supporters right now are basically only, or for the most part, only the people that can either make money off of him being office or the people that are avid, like blind to the eye supporters for him. Go ahead. You can say it. Racists. Yes. And them too. No, I'm not going to say that because they're not all racist, but. Um... they're Okay. Uh, that's true. <laughs> not, not all Trump supporters are racists. But all racists are Trump supporters. Yes, I'll that, say that. That is a fair assessment. Okay. I believe Joe Exotic would have voted for Donald Trump hand, hand over foot, hundred percent. Absolutely, um, absolutely. But so there, besides those people, he's lost a, a decent, maybe not a lot, but he's lost a decent amount of support from the people that compared to the people that supported him the first time he ran. Um, do you think? And I've heard this before. Do you think Joe Biden is moderate enough? to basically sway keep ba like, people like you that are going to vote for him are going to vote for him to try and get trump out of the office so he's got kind of those votes for the most part then you've got the people that are like the moderates that don't want a bernie sanders they're super happy right now because now they've got joe biden because he's way more moderate than leftist so they're going to vote for him do you think maybe because he's a moderate he's going to garner enough support from the moderates and get them to get there and vote for him as opposed to voting for a socialist? I hope so. I hope so. And one of our friends who's been on the show before, we're talking about Ben. I've our seen him post a lot ben, about it. Ben is a registered Republican, and he and I have had many, many debates. Uh, we don't always agree. And in 26, 2016, he, he hated Hillary Clinton. And he hated Donald Trump so much to the point where he wrote in John Kasich for president in 2016. And he and I have been talking this year, and he, he still hates Donald Trump. He won't vote for Donald Trump, but he also 
also he hated Bernie Sanders. And he said, if it is, if it is between, if it's between Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, he's like, I'll probably vote third party for like the libertarian candidate or something like that. He said, but if it's Joe Biden, he's, he, he's very excited. He very much likes Joe Biden and he is going to campaign for him and actively support him. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping there's a lot of people like Ben, like the moderate Republicans and independents, that maybe Bernie was a little bit too far left for them. Yeah. And they don't like Trump because he's been an absolute failure and they see what the last three and a half years have been like. So maybe Joe is in the middle enough, is centrist enough, is moderate enough to get enough of their votes. I hope he, I hope it does. I hope it does. But I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I think what he's going to have to do is pick a very good running mate. Yeah. And I, I think it needs to be someone. A th- I think it needs to be a female. And I think it needs to be a female of color. What do you think? Um, who was who was the I can't remember her name. Who was the younger um, candidate who dropped out? Who was popular but dropped out earlier? What was her name? Um, God, well, there's name? a couple. There's a couple. She's like one. Of, she was are like one t- of the big ones. She was like right up there with like Pete Buttigieg. Like oh, they talked about her all the time. Are like, you talking about? Are you talking about Kamala Harris? I think it might have been are Kamala you, Harris. So Kamala Harris, she's a senator in California. Um, she was a veteran, right? Uh, you're, uh, maybe you're thinking of Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi, Ga- Tulsi, that's what I was thinking of, yeah. Okay. Tulsi is a leftist socialist like Bernie Sanders. I can't see Biden picking her. I, I like Tulsi. <laughs> She's done a couple things like that scratch my head. Uh, she was one of the ones who voted present when the impeachment vote for Trump came, and I really didn't understand that. I lost a lot of respect for her there. But other than that, I, I like Tulsi. I just I don't think she has a chance of being picked. I think it comes down to just a couple people. I think Kamala Harris is a good chance that she gets picked. She is a very moderate centrist. I'm not a big fan of her, but she is an African American woman. Um another name I see thrown around is Stacey Abrams. She is an African American woman. She ran for governor of Georgia, Georgia, a very red state. She is, she's a liberal and she almost won. She actually probably should have won. There was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of voter suppression going on there. It was a whole thing. I heard but about she, that. Yeah, but she's, she's well liked. So I think she's in the discussion there, but I think there's one name out there and it's a little bit outside the box. So you have to go with me here. I think if Joe Biden picks this person, and it's a long shot, but if Joe Biden picks this person, I think he will beat Trump. This is the only chance he has, but I don't know if he's going to do it. And that name is Michelle Obama. Interesting. She's not a politician. I was going to say, yeah. She's not, but neither was Donald Trump, and look where we are. So, And like I said, the VP doesn't have a lot of power, but the Obamas are beloved for whatever reason. And she would deliver the woman vote to him. She would deliver the black vote to him. And that might be enough to push him over the edge. What if Joe Biden, follow me here on an even crazier train. Okay. What, what if Joe Biden decided to pick for his running mate, Oprah Winfrey? Ugh. What would you feel about that? She's very well liked too. She All is. All the women love her. She is. And and her name has been thrown around in the past as running for president herself, and she's never done it. Um, that's because she doesn't want to, but vice presidency, no, that's a little different. Yeah, I, it wouldn't benefit Oprah at all. I mean, she's she's like a billionaire. She's got a good thing going for herself. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it might benefit her because she's probably bored. Maybe she's got she's got like uh, a dun- bunch of things she's doing, but she does it all very well. That it's pr- maybe it's like all kind of clockwork to her she's like oh you know what maybe let's do this because why not uh could be could be i i don't see that happening but we're we're speculating here anyway so yeah yeah so what do you think about joe biden because i know 
you were you're not as far <coughs> to the left as me. Um, I know you like Pete Buttigieg early, and then you kind of came around to Bernie late, and now it's basically it's going to be Joe. And I just want to know how you how do you feel about it? I want Trump out of the office, so that's a big points for Joe Biden. Pretty much anybody, as far as the D and uh, Democrats are concerned, so that's fine. As far as Joe Biden himself, I got to be honest with you, um, he's a little to sleepy old man for me yep he's very much sleepy old man he makes a lot of mistakes in the way he talks the same way trump does. oh he does like he flubs his words like there's no tomorrow he's definitely like just old man sitting on the porch just gabbing away like we make we make fun of the way trump talks because trump sounds like an idiot he sounds uneducated and stupid so what do we do we go and nominate another old white guy who sounds just like Trump when he talks. Yeah, kind so, of. So it's like, what the fuck? So, like, yeah. I mean, in that sense, I don't... Like, if you're... Like, Joe Biden is, for the most part, a career politician. So, like, he should know... Like, he's flubbed up names of places, names of people, names of just events that have happened in fucking history before. Like, he's made mistakes of, like, oh, he by saying... I can't remember the specific example, but I remember listening to him watch or uh, watching him talk about some like event that happened in history and it turns out that event like never happened or didn't happen any way near the way he described it so i'm like in that sense i'm like i'm not excited about him i i am a moderate you know that so i do like the fact that he's a moderate but i think he's just because of the way donald trump has been for the past four years i feel like maybe he's just going to keep going the way not he's not going to make Donald Trump decisions, but he's going to take what Donald Trump has done and kind of just keep things the way they are and just try to like smooth over the pavement as opposed to just re just stripping everything away and re re uh, doing the sidewalk. You know what I mean? Lousy metaphor, I know, but I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm just not excited about it. But I guess I am in the anybody but Trump camp at the moment. So. I guess I'm just going to vote for him just for the sake of voting for him. I, As far as his policies are concerned, I haven't really followed a lot of them because I thought Bernie had a real solid chance of being the candidate. And also, like, he's boring. Biden's boring, dude. He's boring mm -hmm. to listen to. He's boring to hear what he has to say. So I don't even really know entirely what he's all about. I'm going to have to do some research and, like, go on his website and figure out exactly what he wants to do. But I don't know. I was excited for somebody who had not been in the office. I was excited for somebody younger. I was excited for, like you said, I was excited for like Pete Buttigieg early on. And then I changed yeah. my tune with yeah. him after he made some dicey choices during his campaign. So Yeah, I, I mean, I, I liked <laughs> Pete early too. I liked him when he went on to uh, Colbert. Joe Ro to, he went on to Colbert. He was good. He was on Joe Rogan's podcast. I thought he was good. Yeah. But but then he kind of changed his tune because he got a lot of money from corporations and businesses, and and he he came more to the right. <laughs> but I think I think Buttigieg would be better than Biden. So. I mean, and I was I even I was even a little excited for Tulsi a little bit early on because. Mm -hmm. I, I heard her again. She was on Joe Rogan again, mm -hmm. and I liked the way she talked. I liked some of the stuff she had to say. Um, yeah. We had Ed on the show before, and he said that one of the big problems he had with Tulsi was her big thing was like wars of intervention, which he is right in the sense of that's not her biggest problems right now. But I think I liked enough of what she said that I was like, I could I could see, I could, you know, deal with her being president. Like, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So, but Biden, I just, I got... <sighs> I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, which is a bad sign. Because if you don't have a strong opinion one way or another about a candidate, then maybe that shouldn't be your candidate. So, I want you to... I'll give you some homework. I want you to do a little research on Joe Biden and his platform and get back to me next time and tell me what you think. All right, we'll do. Hell yeah. More homework. That's, that's, that's all I need right now. <laughs> all right, so I think we should... On that note, pivot. I think we've talked a lot about politics, so um, I think we should pivot. I think we, uh, yeah. I want to talk about, real quick, going back to a little bit of the COVID-19 stuff. 
I want to talk about a couple stories, one you brought up and one I brought up, of uh, some kind of kind of poor things that are going on during this quarantine uh, thing that's happening. One in particular was Disneyland and their denial to suspend or to get, give refunds on annual passes that they have uh that people are paying for scott for the people that don't know what is the annual pass like what is it what do you get with it like what's it all about so the annual pass is basically a season pass where you can go to disney i i I believe it's just per park so you could go to disney where if you get an annual pass at disney world in florida you can go to the park every single day if you want. And, and you don't have to pay every day. It's just a season pass. Okay. Um, and you get special things with it. You get, yeah, there's, there's other incentives they give you. I have never had an annual pass. I've always wanted one, but I've, I've always crunched the numbers. And sometimes my family, sometimes we take two Disney trips a year. But the last time I calculated it, I believe it was... You had to go into the parks 11 times in a one-year period. And I, I, the most I ever was there was nine. Jeez. So I missed it. So, yeah. So I never, I never have had an annual pass. Um, but, yeah, you and, I, you and I were talking about this. I, I was under the impression that when you got an annual pass, you, just, you had to pay up front. I've, I've, and you got I've, your annual pass. I looked it up, and apparently it's for Florida um, citizens, people who live in Florida. Florida, they, Florida residents. Yeah, yeah. residents. Sorry, yeah, uh, Florida residents. Um, basically, they instituted some years ago, I think it's like 10 years ago or something like that, a monthly payment for the annual pass. So if you lived okay. in Florida, you, you only had to pay monthly for the annual pass. And that's what it was. So I think it's everywhere else. It is like a one year thing, but for okay. Florida residents, it is uh, monthly payments. Okay, that <clears> makes <throat> sense. So I never would have seen that when I looked at it because I don't live in Florida. Right. So when I lo- when I looked at it, we always had to pay, and it was it was something like eleven hundred dollars or twelve hundred dollars up front, which is a lot of money. But if you think about it, it's a hundred bucks to go to Disney for the day. You go that many times. You're saving money in the long run, right? But if it, but if there's a payment plan for for Florida residents, then then that's that's different. I, I was that's I almost was a better deal. That. That's almost a better deal, really. It's just like your Netflix yeah, uh, sure. subscription. Um, but the story is that given the given what's going on in the world, obviously with the coronavirus and the quarantines, because people are out of jobs and out of work. A lot of people, I'm assuming down in Florida, have wanted to cancel their annual subscriptions or their annual passes so that they can kind of have money still in the bank so they can pay their bills. And I guess Disney has denied their uh, cancellations. Like, you can't even cancel right now, apparently. Um, yeah. And people are really pissed off about it. Like, people are saying, like, like there's a lot of tweets going on that there. people are pissed off about, about it, saying, like, oh, I've got bills to pay and, like, I don't need to pay monthly for something that I'm not using and I can't use for to who knows when and you're not letting me cancel it. So that's, like, a big story that's going right now. You're the Disney guy. How do you feel mm-hmm. about Disney after hearing this story that they're not letting these people cancel their subscriptions to Disney? Well, yeah, it's no secret. I, I am a Disney guy. But honestly, I'm not shocked at all. This is nothing new for Disney. They are a greedy capitalist corporation, and they have been from the start. So and it, honestly, if, were getting... if anybody can take the hit, it would be Disney because they are multi-billion oh, yeah. Billion oh, yeah. dollar companies. So. They're, they're a multi-billion dollar company. They could afford to give everyday people a break. And yes, I think they should. I think I think if there's Florida residents who are on a payment plan for their annual passes, I think Disney should do the right thing and, and give them a reprieve, give them a break. Um, I have a friend who has an annual pass right now. He does not live in Florida, so he paid for it up front. And what they're doing for him is they're counting how many days that Disney was closed from start to from the day they close until the day they open back up, however many days that is, 60, 90 days. 
and they add that on to the <clears throat> end of like when his pass would have would have expired. So the Disney passes, when you buy them, they don't run January first through December thirty first. Right. They run from the day from the day you buy it for three hundred and sixty five days. Right. So if there's a gap in the middle there where you can't go, they just add that on to the end. And he's honestly happy with it. He's, yeah, he's that, okay that's with the that. one thing that Disney feels, is. They're not. They're yeah. not. I'm sorry to mean interrupt, but they're they're not like. No. You're not not getting anything. They're at tacking on the amount that you're. They're close to the end of the subscription, which is fine, but like still, it's not not giving them the option. I think is the yeah. problem. Right, right. I just found out about the payment plan for the Florida residents, and yes, I. I agree. That sucks of Disney. They should they should let those people the people out of their plans, but you know they're not going to because it's Disney. They've done a lot of things that I've not been happy of. Um, there's they have they have the Disney College program, and I have some friends who've done that in the past. It's basically you intern at Disney and you get college credits for it. And you get you know you get paid, but of course you're an intern, so they pay you minimum wage next to nothing. And they have you do whatever jobs. It's, yeah. it's hard work, but you but you get to live at Disney. You get to go to the parks every day. I mean, the pay isn't good. The work sucks. You're an intern, but the benefits are being at Disney. If you truly love Disney, the benefits outweigh all the all the cons. So I have friends who've done it, and they said they loved it. They would do it again. But what they did during this shutdown for the for the Disney College program. They told these kids from all over the country, from all over the world that are living at Disney and Disney housing, they said, okay, we're closing. You guys are done. Leave. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Get out of our apartments. And they, they threw hundreds, maybe th thousands of kids, college-age kids, out on their ears and, and with nowhere to go. I've heard stories. I've, I've read – yeah, that's really shitty. And some of them were just, okay, well, I guess I'll go home and wherever I'm from. But some people had nowhere to go. And that just really sucked. Yeah. That's terrible. I did not hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, look that up. Look up when we're, when we're off air. Look up the uh, Disney College program, you know, COVID-19 Disney shutdown. It's it's some horror stories out there, man. Dude, the, the fuck Disney. Like, seriously, hardcore. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of, yeah. But big corporations aren't the only ones that are fucking people over, are they, Scott? Oh, they're not. Oh, tell me more. Uh, Well, this is actually a story that you brought to my attention. I've heard about this happening. I've heard about this happening a lot um, with people, but apparently mm -hmm. there is a woman who is a landlord or landlady, I guess in a sense, uh, who is basically telling her tenants that even though you're out of a job because of the quarantine or you're not getting paid as much because of what's going on in the world it doesn't give you an excuse to not pay your rent and if you are at one day over late with your rent i will get give you a 100 dollar late charge so based on this woman is saying i don't give a shit that you don't have a job you pay your rent or get the fuck out or get uh late fees like you doesn't matter i think i could be wrong you, you might have to pull up the the letter and read it but i thought it was if you're one day over she gives you like a hundred yeah that's what i said fee. if you're if you're one day but late if, yeah but if you're five it was it five days late she's like going to evict you evict you like um, in the mid in the middle of this pandemic she was threatening to evict people if not received in full by the so basically the letter says that if postmarked after the fifth of the month, there will be a hundred dollar late uh, charge, which must be included with that month's rent. If not received in full by the eighth, I will be filing. Uh, or, I, it's a blurry picture for this letter that I have. Um, but basically, I think that is if it's after the eighth, then she will basically be trying to take you to court or throw you out. So I think that's what. It do you do you have the letter pulled up? It's really small on my screen. I do have the letter pulled it's up. It's not a very it's, long. It's blurry though. That's the problem. So okay, um, okay. So you, you can't you can't read it. I was gonna say it's not very long. I wonder if you could read the letter not, to our listeners. Let me see if I can get like a Google image of just like what the letter says, like a better. Um, <clears throat> no, I think it's the same website. Thank you, Google, for being an asshole. Um, <laughs> 
Fuck Google too. You know what? Fuck this whole shit. I'm gonna try to read the letters best I can. Um, but I close this thing. Because I think I think part of the problem is how she worded the letter, and it, it was worded very poorly. So I'm gonna read the letter as best I can. I want to remind all the tenants that there is no ban on evictions in Clay County. Um, this is Missouri, by the way. There's no ban on elections in Clay yeah. County. Rent is due on the 1st of the month and must be in my hands by the 5th of the month or postmarked by the 5th of the month. If postmarked after the 5th of the month, there will be a $100 late charge, which must be included with that month's rent. If not received in full by the 8th, I will be filing rent and possession papers in the circuit court. If you are short on money this month because of working shorter hours, then get or... Oh, this is the part I forgot. This is the fucked up part. Then get or borrow money from your friends or relatives. I am not your family or your banker. Remember, if you take it to the post office in the late afternoon of the 5th, it probably won't get postmarked until the 6th, thus incurring a $100 late fee. So that was the part that was really fucked up that I forgot to mention because it's on this blurry page. Yeah. Um... The yes. comment well, of thank like, you for yeah. Thank you for struggling through and reading that for us. Yeah, the the comment of if you're if you don't have money, borrow from some from your friends or relatives. It's not my problem. That's a bitch right there. That's yeah, kind of a bitch. Her, yeah, her her name's Judy, and I say fuck Judy. Now she's you, a piece of shit. Now you and, said that there is potentially two sides to this story a little bit. Um, yes, yes, I was follow I was following this on. Uh, on reddit and some internet chats and it's there's a there's a large portion of people who are very very much against her for that letter but there's also support for her apparently her son made a statement and he said that his mother is 79 years old she's a widow she lives by herself this is her only real form of income so if if her tenant stopped paying her, she would have no real form of income. Obviously, Social Security and whatever else she has. But, but like, she needs to live off of this. And he said, he admitted, he said, yes, her letter was unfortunate and it was worded poorly. But she needs this money s to sustain herself. And apparently, because it's the internet, she had been getting death threats. And that's not right. You should, probably shouldn't have done that. No. But you knew it was going to come when you're being a bitch on the internet. Um, she could still get paid. She could still get fucking paid. But she doesn't need to be an absolute bitch about if you're one day late, if you get to the post office and you're an hour late, then you get a... No, she could be a little lenient. She could understand that people are going through a hard time right now and maybe just cut some people a fucking break. But no, she's got to be a fucking horrible cunt about it. That's my problem. That's uh, my problem. It seems like a lot of those states that are in like the, I guess you say Rust Belt or like the Missouri, Oklahoma, Alabama kind of area, the Midwestern states you might call them. It seems like well, a lot of well, Missouri and Alabama are in the Deep South, so oh, yeah, I guess they're not they're, they're not Midwest. <clears throat> they're not Rust Belt. It seems like there's a lot of Deep South states that aren't actually in the Deep South. The, um, but yeah, so like it seems like a lot of those states are kind of like dropping the ball with this whole quarantine thing and this COVID-19 thing. Cause I remember I was watching um, last week tonight with John Oliver recently. And it was like an old episode from this past week. And he was talking about how uh, Oklahoma, I think it was, I think it was Oklahoma. The governor basically put out a statement, like, you know, finally uh, adhering to the quarantine issues. And basically in one of his statements, he said that, you know, I just learned, we just, you know, we just learned the other day that you could potentially, you know, catch the COVID-19 and pass to somebody else and never ha receive any symptoms. Like we just found that out the other day. And it's like, well, people have been known that for months. Yeah. So yeah, I think a lot of these states are like dropping the ball when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, so the fact that there is no, a no ban eviction, that, um, there are no ban evictions in this particular county doesn't surprise me, given the fact that a lot of states aren't taking this seriously and they're not protecting their residents. Um, fuck this lady is what I'm going to say. I yeah. think, I think at the very least you could have said like discounts 
or like this month's rent is like you know half off just kind of like help you out like i still got to keep the lights going but you know i'm i understand right, things right. Are going on you know something like that i think i heard this one story of this one uh land lord i can't remember where it is but he has like some 80 tenants or 80 apartments or something like that that he um is in charge of and for like the entire month he's like guys i know i'm gonna take a hit but you don't have to pay rent at all this month because i know we're all you know in a tough time right now so i'll figure it out yeah. but no no rent this month and i'm like that's a good fucking landlord yeah and i'm not saying she didn't have to do that i'm not right. saying don't make them pay they still have to pay but maybe don't be a bitch about it maybe like say hey if you're a couple days late I understand. Shit sucks. I'll waive the late fees, but you still need to pay me. You know, exactly. be a nice fucking person about it. Like, like, work with people. If your tenant comes to you and says, oh my gosh, this, that, and that, then work with them. It's not that hard to be a good person. No, it's not, it's not that so hard to not why, be an asshole. Yeah, and that's why I say fuck, fuck that bitch. You're absolutely right. She's a terrible person, and her name is Judy, and don't send her death threats, but, you know, tell her she's a little fucked up. Um, yeah, exactly. What do you think about the people that, uh, to kind of kick gears from it, what do you think about the people that are doing this thing where they're going to stores and licking products in order to, like, fuck with people? I've Have seen you heard that. These I've seen that in a couple places. Yeah. There's a lot I of have, stories. I have... I don't think it's that many. I really don't. I think I think there's a few assholes and a few idiots out there. I saw one guy, the video, he was like licking oranges. He was licking oranges yeah. and, and he got like he got like punched out by somebody in the store. And there was another one, it was like in Ohio. Some guy was like pretending to cough and pretending to sneeze on all of the produce. And and he was started telling people that he had he had coronavirus. The dude got arrested for it. <laughs> I mean, it was a, maybe it was a lady. It might have been a lady, actually. But but yeah. So I I've heard stories of that. But I don't know, just there was one in once again we're going back to Missouri. There is this guy who was actually arrested and charged with a felony because he was going around uh, filming himself licking merchandise in Walmart. So um, he was basically charged with making a second degree terrorist threat essentially but because he was uh, yeah. going around licking stuff and making coronavirus statements so there was one of those stupid I, I mean before the coronavirus even started happening there was a stupid challenge going around where like dumb gen z's were taking their their tiktoks and their snapchats and going into walmarts and, and they were like they were like you can't sound more older than you sounded just now <laughs> <laughs> but they were like licking ice cream and like putting it back. I'm sure you saw this, right? Yeah. It it was like a challenge that people were putting out there, and a few people got caught and got arrested for it. And it made like the nightly news, and they showed like security footage of younger people doing this. And that was before the coronavirus. I uh, there was um do you, I we talked might have talked about it before, but there was the one. Uh, girl that was doing the tiktok challenge and she was trying to start this challenge where she like licked a toilet seat on an airplane and basically like said it was like a challenge you know pass it on like i'm not afraid of the coronavirus like the challenge like toilet seat so she like licked the toilet seat on an airplane i heard i don't know if it's true i heard she ended up getting i heard the virus so i heard that too yeah <clears throat> i heard the person who licked the toilet seat on tiktok got coronavirus did you now, i don't know if she I don't know if she got it from licking the toilet seat, but Karma's she fucking a bitch. got it. Karma's a bitch. Yeah. Uh, she, well, there was a lot of people that criticized her. She got, like, a lot of flack uh, back. Mm. But people were like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, why would you do that? Even if there's not an epidemic, why would you lick a fucking toilet seat on an airplane? And I guess she responded by saying she has, like, skinny girl privilege or hot girl. It was hot girl privilege where she's like, yeah, that's I, I don't really care what you say because I'm hot. So I'll bounce back from this. It doesn't matter. So, Shit. apparently, hot girl privilege is a thing. Right up there with white privilege, I guess. Um, I think that I'm you know how there's the whole, the whole way, like, the whole war between the boomers and the millennials. Yeah, 
I have a real good feeling that when we millennials are older, we're going to have a war with the Gen Zs. I see it coming. I see it brewing. I mean, I, I'm ready. If they keep if they keep <laughs> licking toilet seats, then we won't have to worry about it because they're all dead with <laughs> just diseases and shit. So, you know, if we want to really get started on that war early, we should encourage them. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> So I think that is about it. We're coming to the end of the show now. Um, hey, it seemed like it went man. a little faster than it normally does. Uh, if you want to get a hold of Foyer Distraction and you want to tell us how you're handling the Bernie Sanders dropping out of the race or if you have any weird stories about somebody licking produce or toilet seats, which is really weird. Actually, don't send me the toilet seats. I don't want to hear about toilet seats. That's gross, because it's going to get into a whole weird thing. Email us, distraction at gmail.com. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Search for distraction at Podcast FYD. We are on SoundCloud and iTunes. Search for distraction. Rate us, like us, follow us, comment on us. The only way we grow is if you guys help us grow. We are also on Spotify, and we're on Google Play. So if you prefer listening to your podcast there... Uh, you search for Podcast FYD, the same tag for our Twitter, and you will find our show. Um, we're also a member of the Be Real Podcasting Network. Head over to Podbean and search for the Movie Guys Podcast. That is our official, unofficial hub for the Be Real Network. Scott. Yes. How are you, Have you gone nuts yet? Are you going crazy? Are you, look, I mean... are you looking for a hero to save the human race? I am. I am. And unfortunately, I think that hero was Bernie. And and bye-bye, Bernie. <laughs>